Hey guys, so if you're new here or if you're not, if you want to hear me voice act, head over to our main channel, links down below. And if you don't, this channel's solely for TTS. Um, if you want to know all the details about what's going on, we have a stream up that you can go and watch, but let's just get into the video. So I'm a Necron Cryptic, so what? Part number six. Need to wake up. Feel extremely cold actually, and everything feels stiff. When I finally take a peek around I find that I'm not alone. Two golden and chrome colored skeletal figures stand to either side of me, their backs to me, they haven't noticed me yet. It takes me a second to identify what the hell they are. A gag at my personal guardian and Kemper at the other lich good who I never bother talking to. Oh shit it's this routine again. Man my everything hurts. When I tried to move I found my legs didn't budge. Nor did my arms. A gag hat. How long has it been? And where are we? Looking around I knew we were not in my chambers on my tomb world. We are returning home aboard Executioner Phileas' ship. He said without turning to me. You have been out of commission for the last 12 years, Lord. Oh wow that was a significantly long time. Doing a quick crunch of the numbers that puts my first time waking up at around 271 years. A moment later Phileas arrived in the room. Cryptic you've awoken. She sounded less than pleased with me right now. Your sanctioned actions have caused quite the stir in your subordinates. In your brazen misuse of the Empire's assets you destroyed an ancient power generator that cannot be recreated. I tilted my head, neural matrices firing. Wasn't that from Trazin's gallery? I had assumed they were fine with me. Not its destruction cryptic. She hissed. Phileas it was in Hones. She held her scythe to my throat. Do not get familiar with me cryptic. I previously tolerated your behavior but henceforth you will provide me the respect my station grants me. You forget I am a representative of the Praetorians. You will address me as Executioner Phileas. She put quite effort into enunciating each syllable in the word Executioner. I swallowed deeply. Transparently. Good. She pulled her scythe from my throat. After that stunt. You did indeed succeed in reawakening 3,024,862 Necrons from Stasis. We have even received flickers of personality found in even the lowliest warrior. However there were other unforeseen consequences of your actions. She held up a fist. And raised a finger. The seismic activity from your actions triggered a sequence of events that brought forth a cataclysmic flash freezing event when the northern polar caps broke. We had to evacuate the newly awakened millions, billions of canoptic constructs. She held up a second finger because of the destruction of the relic power generator we had to evacuate everyone aboard each of our vessels. Meaning the eternity gate set up on this world is now functionally useless. She held up a third. The forced evacuation meant we were unable to recover any additional blackstone beyond what was already harvested. A fourth. We will not be able to return for 24,000 years before the world is safe enough to flash freeze any Necron. You have cost us a tomb world worth of resources, hundreds of thousands of machines lost to us until the world has returned to equilibrium. She sounded infuriated. I tried to speak but she shot me a silencing look. She raised her last digit. Finally, we have witnessed amongst the ranks of your immortals, and warriors that remained in the tomb at the time of your stunt. Several of them draping themselves in cloths and charging into melee with ranged weaponry, occasionally burning with unstable bullet fire. Currently only a troop of around 76 of these malfunctioning necrons have been detained and quarantined. An inconceivable madness has taken them and what I believe is the start of a new virus. I felt myself shrink. I am entirely within my right to execute you where you stand. She made a show of lightly slashing through one of the suspension joints of my neck, it was like having a burning knife cutting through you as it cooked you. But, these transgressions can be overlooked. Vestiges of greater personality and memory have been discovered in fragmented segments across the engramzos of your world. The ones that were awakened by you over two centuries ago. Trazin has begun cataloging these memory engrams. She remained quiet for a somber moment. We have seen what came before. During the flesh times. The faces of a child necronted. Festivals. Celebrations. Funerals. 
He is still searching through each of your warriors, making copies of the memories. And the power to an unprecedented million Necron simultaneously could prove to be a powerful asset. As such you will continue to serve the Empire unless you should commit yet another foolhardy act that draws my attention. I nodded vigorously. Good, now then we shall be arriving to your tomb world within the year. We will discuss with Fer and Namath several matters about their integration. You will be rousing your Ferak so she may further understand the situation you have placed your tomb in. Farron Namath has waited long enough and will require an audience with her when we arrive with the remainder of the populace. I remained quite. Actually just hoping Trazin had pilfer the Hementh dynasty data records, I get the feeling that if Phileas won't kill me then Namath will for what I did to his tomb world. I was not allowed to leave my sarcophagus. So for now I just spent time thinking over what I had experienced. The last thought I had during the second resonance cascade. I was incomplete. I didn't understand what that meant. I tried to look at it in a literal sense. Looking over every centimeter of my body there was a small space in my head that could certainly be used. If how fucking crammed full of machinery and additional systems every part of my body was any indication. I may have been missing a piece of my brain. Oh shit. I've actively been hallucinating in the past. There were entire fits of me not realizing things were not right. Confusing metals for citadel paint cans. Static. My neural matrices automatically ignoring warnings. All those buried memories Ishka had that I had previously not seen even after supposedly looked through every part of his brain. Okay that explains that. I think I may have some serious questions for my Ferak when I wake her up. Eventually our little group returns to my home system. Docking down was a fun experience as literally billions of canoptic constructs surged out of our ships. Fucking hell we're more than quadruply outnumbered by our construct population now. Bonus points we had 5 new Seraptic heavy constructs which would defend our planet's core. Phileas finally released me from my tomb. Trizin and his whole mess of assets were heading back, likely to pack away a century's worth of acquisitions into the gallery. Phileas nudged me off to go and prepare the rite of awakening on my planet's Ferak. In the meantime she would be sitting down and having a little chat with Namath about his tomb world. I spent the next three years within the innermost bowels of the tomb. The Ferak's tomb wasn't well lit but regardless I worked away at the ritual. She had an entire host of lich goods and one Seraptic heavy construct watching over her. During the ritual I occasionally had to stave off the urge to use the strange algorithmic chance I had used during the second resonance cascade event. It was incredibly taxing to do the rite of reawakening this time. Ideas and other involuntary secondary and tertiary subroutines were starting in my mind without my consent. It was getting infuriating but I had no time to be made, I can't fuck up her awakening. I'd get my answers from her soon enough. Be of Ralal Council Warlock of the World Maya Resilian, and devotee to the goddess of fate Mori Haig. The last century has seen much in the development of my abilities. In that time I have devoted much of the century in deep meditation and contemplations on the teachings of Mori Haig. I believe her teachings will be vital for my people's continued existence. I have seen the flow of time coming unraveled and confusing. The tapestry of fate is in tatters, what was once preordained for our people is now uncertain. When I look to the millennia ahead I am tormented with vagueness and much shrouded in darkness, I warned my council of the future ahead. Fear the ghost with just one eye, all that we know shall come to die, the Eldri's demise will come to rise, when new moon blots out our skies. Be Ferak Savarek of the Vuklet dynasty. During the flesh times my dynasty had dutifully served the empire well, as any lesser dynasty would. Generations of nobility and master artificers were born from our dynasty. We made allies of the Nahilak and Aurusk dynasties. Close familial bonds made over the generations. Small as we were, we prospered, short as our time was we enjoyed smaller moments of our fleeting lives. But an EON of war took that from us. We had numbered tens of billions during the flesh times. But after the war we numbered barely two billion. Countless battles across countless stars. The bitter sweet revenge against the old ones, and its lesser creations. One that had claimed our most ancient weapons and vessels. A glory that had cost me nearly all of my people. 
a revenge we had taken at the memories, minds, and souls of my people. It wasn't even to call them people. We were lords of a dead empire. We all cursed Zerus and the Setan for the gift of biotransference. Rural is a great app available on the Apple and Google Play Store as well as desktop for creating beautiful 8-bit character art. The app has 14 supported races, 150 plus weapons, 400 plus armor pieces for you to mix and match, 20 plus mini bases. There is that much to work from I was able to make Cold Steel the Hedgehog, the God Emperor of Mankind, Pepe and they are always adding more artwork. The app also has a character sheet to help keep track of everything during games. And if that wasn't enough you can play about with the app for free with limited artwork. So go ahead check it out and if you decide to buy the app use promo code NICKBEDIA for 10% off and it lets them know we sent you. It's a great sponsor and a great app and we hope you guys go ahead and check it. But let's get back to the video. Those of us with our minds still intact were grateful when we were told to wage war on the Setan. What fools we were. We had waged war against Serenoga known as the Outsider. He was an insane god thing that burned brighter than any star we had seen. There was no reason or order in that creature's existence caused madness and fear to my legions. As if granting them echoes of their soul only so it may torment them. Indeed billions died before we were able to shatter them significantly enough to be entombed across a tesseract vaults. What had disturbed me most had not been the last 14 billions, but the looming feeling that we had only fought a much smaller fragment of what we believed to be the outsider. Not long after the war against the outsider we were ordered into a great sleep. We were made to abolish much of our old tomb cities replacing it with sarcophagi. We would be made to sleep for the next 60 million years. We couldn't say no, it was an order by the Silent King. And so we stepped into our deep sleep. I saw off many of my lords and cryptex before I went to sleep myself. I slept for 42,274 years. I awoke to see my cryptek Ishska. Be Ishska. The Ferak wakes with an eruption of Belefire which seems to be absorbed into her being rather quickly. That seems somewhat ominous. Her voice is a cold metallic hiss. It wasn't too much of a far cry from Zagara from Starcraft but I'd be fucked if I mentioned that to her. She looked at the room around her, she was sending out an interstitial message. The Seraptek and Lichgood nodded in unison. The Lichgood swiftly left the room whilst the heavy constructs powered down. That was fucking unsettling. Ishka, why have you awoken me 18 million years early? Her voice gave me fucking chills which I didn't know I could still have. I stuttered for a moment. Aha uh -huh, W. Well you my Farak. I choked on my words for another few seconds. I have done a great many deeds when I awoke some two centuries ago. The Awakened Council has seen me as an asset and I have gained as many new asset I was dragged into the air by one crushing grip. Idiot. I thought I had sufficiently lobotomized you. At best you were supposed to only make a few weapons or constructs. Not get noticed by the tree arc. Her hold on my throat was crushing the servos and suspensions of my throat. I felt my vocal emitter strain to let out so much as a syllable. Go out lob. Optimize? She tossed me to the ground in a heap. It's not used now. I will return your mind after I am to meet with the council. You better have not roused any suspicions towards me or I will have you eradicated before the tree arc gets to you half wit. She cursed deeply. Many ancient Necron swears that gave the rough meaning of wishing my being an extraneous and prolonged life racked by every cancer conceivable against our radiation filled sun. What the fuck was that supposed to mean? I thought that she was supposed to be happy about all these new perks. Ensure your workshop is tightly sealed. In fact, close off that entire wing of the tomb with solid blackstone. I will be speaking with our guests. She stormed out of the room leaving me like a crumpled sack of potatoes. After a few seconds my necrodermis healed itself and the deep impression she had left on my neck was gone. I got up to my feet to head off and take care of my workshop. What life had Ishka led before I started inhabiting him? Overwrote him. Questions for later. I gathered up manned necrons to seal off the halls that led to my hidden workshop. For the next few hours I was busy seamlessly encasing the entire workshop in nothing but half a mile's worth of blackstone. 
Does the ferrack literally have a chunk of my brain? It took a few hours before I received a ping from Phileas to translate to her point. It didn't take long, I was swiftly teleported to their position. Narmoth, Savarek, Phileas, and a full host of Triok Praetorians were in a discussion. Phileas addressed me first. Cryptic, will you tell your Ferak and Feran Narmoth what your actions have caused? It wasn't a request but a demand, one with deadly consequences if I did not comply to the fullest extent. I tensed up and just held on to one of my essence tiles for a moment. In my haste to wake up the remaining 3 million legions of Necrons I failed to inform the Praetorian of my plans. In the cascade I awoke the remaining legions but set off a series of events that have rendered the world unvisitable and uninhabitable to the Necrons for 24,000 years. My actions led to the destruction of a fleet powered generator, which was an asset that belonged to the Nehilak dynasty. The seismic activity broke a massive section of the ice shelf into the sea, desalinating the ocean and causing an ice age that threatened to freeze over all Necrons on the planet at the time. Which would have accelerated the power of the living metal eating microbes. With the tomb still open the flash freezing has likely wormed itself into every nook and cranny of the tomb's upper half destroying any vehicles and unsalvaged data vaults that had not yet been recovered. Narmoth leaned in heavily on me at that point. In addition, I hesitated. I have unknowingly infected 76 of our own warriors with an unknown virus we have yet to comprehend. I felt all eyes on me. And it felt as though they wished to atomize me. I spent another few minutes explaining finer details of my blunders. Phileas finally spoke after an agonizing hour of silence that followed me admitting to my mistakes. In the three years during which you were indisposed Trazin, the overlord of Solemnace was kind enough to aid you. He has presented a majority of the records from the Tom Wirralde gun he preserved. In addition, presented a lengthy compilation of salvaged memory fragments from the flesh time. He has also been willing to overlook the destruction of the fleet power generator. I took a deep breath, I may not be entirely boned. You will be required to inform the Triok Praetorians of what methods you use to awaken the 3 million simultaneously. Along with you will detail exactly what divinations lie ahead of us, Awakener. Immediately my Ferak turned to me, most definitely confused. Phileas left not long after Thar, we will be speaking at a later date. I learned not long after that Narmoth would become a vassal dynasty allowed to expand within our territory. He would retain all his titles, fight alongside us and assist us to the fullest extent of his abilities. In return we would use our disgustingly full coffers for the benefit of allowing him to expand within our region. It was a fair trade off for someone who just lost their home. He was certainly having strong feelings towards me. What they could be, I had no idea. After the meeting Savarek had me following her elsewhere in the tomb. By foot. We walked for days in silence, she occasionally acknowledged one of the now immortals that had some semblance of personality. She stared a long while at Duracell when we happened to pass him. This was her first time seeing the new Canoptec unit after all. She also had seen a few of the new weapons, but said nothing. She just gave me what I assumed was a scowl. We eventually reached the Grand Amphitheater. Fuck am I going to court? She had me step into the center of the room while she marched up to her throne. Walls came down over the doors into the room. Court was in session. She exhaled deeply, tired beyond her years. Since when did a lobotomized cryptic such as yourself become an astromancer? Were the first words out of her mouth. I I I I a why you see. I stuttered. And now you can hardly speak. Shards I was under the impression you had remained intact after we had that part of your neural matrices. She sneered. I cleared my throat. I woke up with this knowledge. I have seen what will become of the universe if we remain slumbering. I thought it best to retrieve every asset I was aware of to ensure our dynasty shall be prepared for with a wave of her hand she silenced me. There's the problem Ishka, you were thinking. A half wit's plans are half baked. You should have awoken me first. Now we have the awakened council looking upon us. In the days we spent walking to this chamber I have been observing the engrams of each denizen of this tomb. Right double quotation mark. I have seen every little action through their eyes. You have become. Different. Foreign. These projections. These alien theatrical projections. 
I wish to not be here. Are these a part of these visions you received upon your awakening? I hastily nodded. Yeah yes my fair ack. She took a few months before she spoke again. A tick nomandrite, transmogrifier, and now an astromancer. Really Aishka, you must keep your talons more hidden. My mind sputtered, the word hurt to hear out loud. I could feel a numb thrumming pulsing through my head. Techno. Mandrita? I asked in my disoriented state. She had a clip tone when speaking. Heavens yes, generations of Tichnomenrides raised under our roof after that tree are ordered for their genocide. The living metal of my body shook, as if it had become a ferrofluid. Why would our dynasty willingly give up an asset such as that when we could cultivate and profit off of it instead? Her words filled me with pain knowledge. My mind was trying to rectify itself as this knowledge was a key to achieving completion. All the while she sat on her throne, watching me. Almost disgusted at me. Get up. She ordered. I weakly stood up upright but how did I feel like outright collapsing. Tell me why you made the scorpioid constructs, and the additional armaments. I felt compelled to answer her. For excavations and to fight off against hordes of spindle drones. Elaborate. She asked. I made a projection on the ceiling with my ocular. I displayed the spindle drones of the Blackstone Fortresses. The next few months passed in a haze. We spoke about chaos. The fall of Eldery. The birth of Slanesh. The Great Crusade. The Heresy. Terror and the Eye of Terror. So many other things I ended up telling her involuntary. I couldn't help myself for some reason. No tabletop RPG is complete without beautiful models on the table and the best place to get models is from us. If you check the link below we have everything you could need for your magical realm. Only the finest of big titty wafers here. But if you're not into models or don't play with models we got you covered with subclasses such as the Gachimashi Wizards, the Simp Warlock and the North FC Fighter. Also we have started selling 5th edition adventures with our first one featuring Belle Delphine, the succubus that has poisoned the town's well and turned the villagers into simps. If any of that stuff sounds fun to you go ahead and check the link below but let's get back to the video. She eventually grew bored with this line of talking and had me cease projections. You've seen much in the way of the galaxy's histories. And you are certain that your actions are necessary to prevent this. Emprin and these drukery? I nodded quickly. You are to continue your little schemes cryptic. Once you've secured the first of these blackstone fortresses I shall return to you the remnants of your mind. And the accrued manuscripts of your ancestors studies. I believe I can work with this. She sent me away. She was going to be off preparing for something. It was kinda horrific to be under the control of the Farak. I was allowed to return to my workshop. My necrodermis had finally settled down, I wasn't feeling so off anymore. But fuck, finding out I know. Aishka was once a right was a bit intense. It explained away a lot of things. And the lobotomy explained everything else. The knowledge I might get access to some right research was actually quite appealing actually. I wonder if I could manage to strap a Aeonic orb to a Blackstone Fortress. Better yet could I even find notes on how to make one in the first place? I spent a good long while removing the meters of blackstone walls. When I finally was done I could head into my own workshop. This time there was no, insanity laden delusions. Just the various glyph tablets that I knocked down a little over a century ago. Looking over the plans I had I mostly just want to get to work on the Inmitic Exterminator. I hear our Tom World has reported sightings of megafauna. I think I could just make a few weapon platforms with these instead of mounting them on a Necron. It's like a mobile mini pylon. Except for organics. Betrazin. I have been occupying myself with the latest acquisition expedition. I have spent the last months following the exploits of an orc wagon to Eldery territory. An impressive orc force 10 million strong against the Eldery of the world Sefulka. Planetary decree has called for a full defensive action. One by one the orcs Spasa hulks came crashing down through orbit targeting the most densely populated areas. Even as I watched the death throes of the Eldery world I couldn't help but focus with my subroutines. In truth my mind drifted towards the future the cryptic Aishka showed me. Indeed it had caught my attention, 
I had wanted to collect much of what he had shown me for my galleries. Aishka had shown Executioner Phileas and myself what the future held for us. His prophetic visions were disturbing, a galaxy in flames and torment. Dramatic yes, but one that seemed too malleable for those who could shape the Empion. I had provided my support and forgave the destruction of certain assets from the cryptic for aiding Sanit. But as well as the fact that I held some belief it was a necessary expenditure. Besides he will have millions of years to repay me for it. I couldn't help but smile internally at the thought. I focused my attention at hand. I had planned to capture this mech boy working on his 9th death roller, and I readied my next tesseract labyrinth. Be a luminous Zeris. I have been dissecting a captured Eldery warrior, chest cavity opened, I was removing their respiratory organs while keeping them in a state of suspended animation. I have personally ensured two mind shackle scarabs have been implanted into their frontal lobe. My work requires a fine level of caution lest I allow undue psychic interference during my examination. You truly are quite a fine specimen number 573, most of your kind would have perished by now. I gingerly ran my fingers through the sweat filled hair of theirs. With continued trials I believe you and any future instances of your kind undergoing this invasive internal examination may yet serve me. he flatlined soon after, mouth foaming with saliva. What a waste. I grumbled. I was about to begin the preservation of their organs however I received a ping, someone was going to make a visit. I quickly moved to the docking bay, a full host of Trioc Praetorian had arrived aboard a host of Shroud class light cruisers. They informed me that our world was receiving new canoptic constructs. One suited for excavation, both melee and ranged combat, each fitted with something called hyperface threshers. I marveled at the great influx of canoptic scorpioid that had arrived. Their armaments were ingenious, such a design brought strokes of inspiration to me. I asked the Praetorians who had created these constructs. One cryptic named Aishka of the Vukhlet dynasty. I must collaborate with this mind. Be Aishka. Well it took a long time 47 years to get the Enmetic Exterminator up to a functioning version. I had to move to the surface, running constant tests. No Necron could carry it for the time being instead I had it mounted onto a tripod platform. I unintentionally ended up killing around 93 immortals over the years due to complete reactor meltdowns. After the nuclear detonations were taken care of they would reincorporate with some annoyance. That was an issue I ran my head into the wall for many years to fix. I moved on to work on a floating platform that resembled the Lockless Heavy Destroyer. That took 22 years to perfect, I began mass production on the mobile mounted in Mythic Exterminator weapons platform. They should be quite good against our local megafauna. I haven't been bothered by anyone in the last 60-ish years. I had been doing some routine trial runs on the latest batch of weapon platforms with the Death Marks and Immortals. We had just been hunting one of the creatures native to the surface. Something that looked eerily similar to a monster I remembered from DND. When we managed to finally get a hit on one with a violent net-like beam of energy we could see it twist and pulse its body becoming undone. After a moment it exploded into a ball of light and gory squalor. I admired my work for about 2 seconds before I felt someone tower over me. Phil I hug. Executioner Phileas it's good to see you. I immediately bowed my head to the Trioc Praetorian. I see you're working on another one of your contraptions, Cryptic. Phileas had her war scythe stowed at her back for the moment. Good meaning she wouldn't try and take my head today. I quickly spoke up. Yes this is the final evolution for the Inmitic series of weapons I have planned for the time being. I see, she seemed disinterested. Your creations are being mass produced and sent out across the stars to the slumbering tomworlds. A ship has already arrived to your world moments ago with the mass produced versions of your creations. That's good to hear, does this mean you'll be taking this one as well? I point to the new weapons platform, she nodded no. I'm here to finally discuss the matters of the future you saw. Ah yes, I only gave you a brief glimpse of what was to come. I relaxed and leaned myself up against the hover platform. What part of the future were you interested in? She mused for a moment. Tell me about the great eye you showed us. I let out a prolonged sigh. The eye of terror, in some 17 million years it shall open. 
The Eldari so dissident and foul debased in their pleasure-seeking ways will flood the galaxy with their kind and bloat the realm of souls with their madness. I began to project my vision of the future to her. So heinous and so far gone were they, that their psychically potency would birth a god of excess in the realm of souls. This new god would tear a fissure in reality, her birth cry so loud and psychically devastating it instantly killed all but a small fraction of the Eldari. Thus came to be the Eye of Terror, and how the Eldari became known as the Azurani and its more vile kin. The Drukari. I showed her the various descendants of the Fall. The Orican. I have been occupied with many studies these last two and half centuries since I last spoke to that bastard from the Vokla dynasty. My studies have proved to bear nearly no fruit after our previous encounter. Looking to the future has been... difficult. No damn near impossible since that whelp woke. The sequence of events has been entirely thrown from order. The Eldere seem to muster for war, the orcs march towards Tomworlds, and shards damn it I see the movement of colossal structures the size of moons and stars shift all towards the hands of both Trazin and the foolish Skur. What has he divined that I could not? My mediations are constantly interrupted and I find it harder each year to follow the flow of the future. Eventually I couldn't take it anymore. That bastard had agreed to teach me what he saw and I have waited long enough. I traveled to his tomb world. First I had a plan to corner him and have a symposium with him. But I quickly found that before I could reveal myself to him, the executioner had arrived. I cursed to myself and simply sat back, hidden from view yet still listening to this meeting of theirs. He spoke of the fall of the Eldari and the birth of a neverborn god thing, he even claimed that I of all people would be blinded by this event for 10 years. I cursed and flashed the sign of Vork, a metaphysically obscene gesture that, in simple terms, indicated that I hope the Awakener would, in all timelines and dimensions, come to a brutal and humiliating end. He carried with greater portents than I had anticipated, such detail and knowledge that even I had not divined. He projected and explained in great detail so much. The name of each of the great emperor and beings that stirred within the warp and the great domains of power. Tsinj, Korn, Slanesh, Nurgle. The vile flesh primitives and their grand creation of the space marines. The coming of the Zotes and their Jenna stealers heralding the coming of the great hunger whom he called the Tyranids. He spoke. Dead gods curses. He spoke of the return of the Silent King. He had even shown images of his arrival with immense clarity. Where had this fool been during the flesh times? What trick of the Setan had he been given to foresee in such intricate detail what I had not? Biyshka. I've been spending the last few hours explaining in great detail the threats to the Necrons to Phileas. She's asked questions here and there but finally something has gotten her undivided attention. The Silent King shall return early, why is that? She asked. The Tyranids we've discussed earlier, the evolving, the biomass consuming threat. Our king. Seeks to return us to the flesh, he and Illuminous Zerus work towards it. And our king cannot return us to the flesh if there is no flesh to be transferred into. He plans on transferring our consciousness into a form that could host us. Something pricked at the back of my mind. I quickly pushed myself off the platform and an idea struck me. I dialed my chronosense back. The pariahs are former humans, could a Necron transfer their consciousness into one of these forms? It would be one step closer to being organic, with the help of the Admech's methods of reproduction it's possible to actually have Necrons getting closer towards organic life. This was something I should look into later. I let my perception of time return to normal and I looked to Phileas. I don't believe it would be my place to speak further on the Silent King's plans. As even if I am aware of what I've said further I can't say I am aware of much of his plans beyond that point. Phileas tilted her head. You are aware of our lord's intentions, but you don't wish to tell me what they are. She asked. I gave a quick nod. You will tell me regardless. She simply reached back to her war scythe before I began to spill the beans. The Silent King will arrive some centuries trying to make allies of the one of the Space Marines legions I very briefly touched upon, working together to push back the Tyranids. He wishes to repel them from entering, in time he will locate various spots in the galaxy that have pylons. 
to set up a nexus that will ward off the Tyranids. He would be opposed all across the galaxy. Bye. I trail off. It was the Tichnomandrites who would rebel against him, and as I just learned I'm one of them. She gestured for me to continue. Forces that I will avoid saying for now. She hefted her war scythe. I quickly lifted my arms to block. You clearly don't wish to say who would oppose our silent king. She leans over me, scythe extended. If I told you, you would likely be sun angered you'd murder me outright. I blurted. I felt something push my arms out of the way, it was the bottom tip of her war scythe. I helplessly stared up at her towering form. You will tell me regardless. I am the only one who can truly say what might anger me. Your continued stalling has gotten tiring cryptic. Her words sent shivers throughout my body. Right. The ones who rebel against the Silent King. Are the Technomandrites. Well guys hope you enjoy today's video. We are going to assume you have if you have stayed to the end. Consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell if you really enjoyed it to stay up to speed with any and all new videos. Also check out the links below to our shop for some fat ass titties and our sponsor Rural and be sure to use a promo code at checkout so they know we sent you and you'll get 10% off. And until next time.